Hello everyone, Miss Carrie here from Miss Carrie's Creations. Today I'm going to share a stamping technique you can use to create a mixed watercolor look for your fall projects. While I was creating this layered leaf card, I was watching the Craft Roulette Challenge with Mary and Julie. I was inspired by their take on the four parameters and decided to create my own version of a card. Throughout the video, I'll share more about Craft Roulette and how I followed each of these parameters for the challenge. I'm going to be using a few stamps from my favorite stamp set, Textured Leaves, and I'm going to be stamping the images on some distressed watercolor cardstock. Now this cardstock does have a textured side and a smooth side. I'm going to be using the texture side because I like the way that looks, but sometimes the stamps work much better on the smooth side. I've gone ahead and placed both of the leaf images onto some acrylic blocks and now I'm going to show you how I created that watercolor background using a rock and roll stamping technique along with a spritz of water. For the first leaf image I'm going to be using Sundance ink, papaya, and rosemary. I'm going to start out by inking up my leaf image with the Sundance ink. I want full coverage on that stamp. And then I'm going to roll the edges of the stamp in the papaya. And it's going to go about midway across the stamp. And if you take a look at it here, you can see I still have some Sundance in the center and some papaya around the edges. And now I'm going to roll it a third time in rosemary. And this time I'm going to be careful that I'm just barely touching the edge of the stamp in the rosemary. I'm going to go ahead and add some ink to the stem of this leaf also. Now take a look at this. You can see all three colors on that leaf image. Before I stamp it down onto the watercolor cardstock, I'm going to spritz it with a little bit of water just to wet the ink, and then I'm going to stamp the image down. And as you can see, it creates this beautiful leaf image with all of those colors mixing together because of that spritz of water. All right, I'm going to wash the stamp, and then I'm going to create another image. Once again, I'm going to ink up the entire stamp using Sundance ink, and then I'm going to roll the edges in papaya ink, and then I'm going to lightly roll the edges again using the rosemary ink. And before I stamp it down, I'm going to spritz it with a little bit of water and place it down onto that watercolor cardstock. So the first leaf image I created has a little bit more yellow to it. The second leaf has a little bit more green. You can vary the color of your leaves depending on how much ink you add when you're rocking and rolling your stamped images. And that's why I like using this technique when I create fall leaves. I love the variegation of color. It reminds me of how the leaves change color in fall. All right, before I stamp the large leaf images, I'm going to take a moment to get rid of that fly that keeps flying in front of my camera. So just give me a moment to do that, and then we'll come back to the project. All right, now we're going to create some larger leaf images using Gold Rush, Paprika, and Rosemary. I'm going to start out with the Gold Rush color, and I'm going to ink up my entire stamp. And then I'm going to roll the stamped image in Paprika so that it covers it about a third of the way around. And then just like we did with the last one, I'm going to roll the edges lightly in Rosemary. Before I stamp this image down onto the watercolor cardstock, I'm going to lightly spritz it with some water, and then I'm going to be placing this in the upper right corner of that watercolor cardstock. These three colors have a rich tone, and they look beautiful on this large leaf. After washing my stamp, I'm going to repeat the process with the Gold Rush ink, the Paprika ink, and the Rosemary ink. Now you might have noticed that the leaf images are going off the edge of the paper and I'm rotating them as I stamp them. I'm also creating a triangle shape as I randomly stamp these images. Those are just some tips and tricks that you can use whenever you're creating randomly stamped backgrounds. Always have the images go off the edge, rotate your stamp, and create triangle shapes with the images. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish stamping this background. I'm going to alternate back and forth between that smaller leaf and the larger leaf to fill in that randomly stamped background. 
And as you can see, I'm just filling in those spaces along the edge as I create this variegated leaf background. I love how the spritz of water helped those colors blend together to create the look of realistic, color-changing fall leaves. Now you guys know that I love adding texture to my projects. So I'm going to add a little bit of texture paste to this leaf background using this cross stencil. This is one of our new card front stencils and I'm going to be using this magnetic board to help hold the stencil in place as I apply the texture paste. The texture paste I'm going to be using is called Distressed Texture Paste in a grave color. So you can tell it's designed for Halloween, but I love the gray tone that it has. It just brings a nice earthy texture to this background. This texture paste is a little stiffer and has a bit of a grit consistency to it. So you will need to hold your palette knife at an angle as you are running it across the stencil so that you don't end up with any of the texture paste underneath the stencil. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this up close. I love how the texture paste just brings this background up another level. For my yellow background, I have chosen this piece of paper from our Noteworthy collection. Before I add that stamped leaf background onto that piece of paper, I'm going to use some antique linen distress oxide ink, and I'm just going to use it to distress the edges of that piece of cardstock. One of the parameters for Craft Roulette this week was to have a yellow background, and that's why I chose that noteworthy paper, and I'm adding that antique linen around the edge. It's just going to kind of meld the two together and create the look of a yellow background. Off camera, I added some stitching around the edges using gray thread, and I distressed the edges using gray ink. This matches that gray texture paste I added to the background. Now we're going to create that watercolor leaf. I cut this out using the thin cuts that match the stamp set that I used for that background. I cut the leaf out of distressed watercolor cardstock because I'm going to be using inks and my water brush to create the look of a changing leaf. I'm going to be pulling ink from the lid of the ink pad. So I am smushing the lid and the base together, and this is going to transfer ink to the lid. Then I'm going to use my water brush to add a little bit of water to that ink, and I'm just going to drip the color onto the watercolor cardstock. This method is an alternative to using watercolor paints. You might not have watercolor paints in your stash, or maybe your watercolor paints don't quite match the color palette that you stamped your images with. So being able to pull ink from the actual ink pads allows me to match the colors on this leaf to the colors that I used on that stamped background. So as you can see, I have taken the Sundance and dripped it onto the leaf, and now I'm using papaya and I'm blending the two colors together. Once I have allowed it to dry for a little bit, I'm just going to come in with some rosemary and allow it to blend in with the other colors I've already added. This ink pad watercolor method helps you to achieve the look of a changing leaf, and it's just a fun new way to add color to your images. Now, if you want to, you could just leave the leaf as is, but I love the texture on these textured leaf stamps. So I wanted to be able to stamp that image onto the background. And I did this using some Sundance ink. You can see that it just barely shows up, but it does give me that subtle texture of a leaf skeleton. One of the other parameters was a postage stamp. Now I didn't have a postage stamp, but I did have this cancellation stamp image, and I thought it would add a funky little element to the front of this leaf. I'm going to be stamping the image in pewter ink. This is going to match the gray distressing I added around the edges, and the gray texture paste, and the gray thread. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp three of these onto my leaf. And I really love the way this looks. That cancellation stamp adds a bit of a vintage vibe and kind of a retro feel to that leaf image. 
Right, so you might have noticed that I've had that peacock piece of pattern paper sitting here through most of the project. And I went to put it onto the card and it really wasn't working for me. So I dug through my scrap stash and ended up grabbing a couple of other different pieces of paper and cardstock. I've grabbed some Cricut corrugated cardboard, which I'm going to cut down to fit the front of the card, and a piece of wood grain sage colored paper that was from our hillside collection. And both of these really have a nice earthy fall feel to them, and they look really pretty layered together. I'm just going to tear across the top of that wood grain piece of paper and tear across the bottom, and then I'm going to start layering all of these elements on the front of my card. In my scrap bin, I also found this product strip that has all of these little sentiment tabs on it. And I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and use one of these as an element on my card. I really like the look of tabs and tags on my cards and scrapbook pages. And I especially love ones that already have a sentiment on them. It actually saves me a step. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out, and then I'm going to be placing it over on the left side of that leaf. Right now I have quite a few vertical elements on this card and I needed a horizontal piece to ground it. So I found another product strip in a pewter plaid and I'm just going to be adhering this to the wood grain paper underneath the leaf. This card is full of color and texture. We have all those watercolor pieces in the background. I'm adding this element of texture with the corrugated cardstock. And then I'm just adding a subtle texture by adding some wood grain paper on the top. To me, this card really screams fall. All of these items came from my scrap bin, and I was creating this card while I was watching Craft Roulette. I really do enjoy these weekly challenges because it allows me to pull elements together I don't think I would have done otherwise. So I mentioned earlier that the back of the noteworthy papers is white. One side's distressed, the other's white. For the background, I use the distressed, and for my sentiment, I'm going to be using the white. I like this sentiment and anything is possible, but I don't need the amper sand. So I'm going to be using a masking technique, which was one of the parameters, to remove the amper sand on this sentiment. I'm going to be placing a piece of post-it tape on the side of that white piece of paper, and that's going to be my mask. I'm going to be using some pewter ink once again to stamp the sentiment. I'm going to ink up the entire stamp, and then I'm going to stamp it so that I line up the ampersand over the top of that piece of post-it tape. And then once I'm done stamping, I can go ahead and remove the post-it tape, and it has created a sentiment without the and ampersand. Now I could have just inked the sentiment on the portion that I wanted, but inevitably I always end up getting ink on a part of the stamp that I didn't want ink on. So this masking method is just an easier way for me to remove a portion of the sentiment. To add some more texture to the card and match some of the other wood grain elements I added, I'm grabbing some of these wood veneer shapes from the Pumpkin Spice collection. I'm just going to tuck a little leaf in there behind the sentiment. These wood veneer pieces are stickers, so you do need to remove the backing. Now this adhesive is super, super sticky, so I discovered that it was much easier for me to tuck this behind the sentiment, then pull off a little bit of the backing, and then tack it in place. I don't know that I would have been able to tuck it behind that sentiment if I had removed the backing because of that super sticky adhesive. At the top of the card, I'm going to add another wood element, which is a little button that I've threaded with some gray thread. And then we are going to add this card front onto an A2 size card base, which was the fourth parameter. So I added a yellow background. I added a postage stamp, a cancellation stamp. I created a masked image with the sentiment, and it's on an A2 size card base, which met all of the parameters of the Craft Roulette Challenge. I want to thank you for joining me today for another card making tutorial. I hope you enjoyed learning how to do that rock and roll watercolor technique for your leaves, and that you plan on using that technique on one of your future projects. 
If you would like to learn more about Craft Roulette, I have put a link to their YouTube channel in the description below. Like I said, I really enjoy these weekly challenges. They allow me to stretch my creative brain. I hope you have a wonderful week and I can't wait to see what you create.